Good afternoon. Today we have the um, opportunity to interview Dr. Talak uh, an assistant professor from the Istanbul Shahir University. And the first question, I what I would like to ask you is um, regarding the image of the um, bipolar world in, in 1990. Um, the relationship between Turkey and its neighbors has changed since then. Uh, what were the major changes, according to you? Uh, I think uh, Turkey has been for a so long period detached from its neighbors. So during the colonial era, Turkey's relations with its neighbors, especially in the Balkans, in the Middle East and the Caucasus, has been done through the big powers. And during the Cold War era, Turkey's relations, Turkey was the eastern wing of NATO bloc. So Turkey was at the same time the border between the East and West. So it was a security barrier between uh, East and West uh, blocks. So in that sense, Turkey had experienced too many problems. So Turkey did not have opportunity to integrate culturally, economically, and develop positive relations because it has seen its neighbors as security threats. So transformation of the, you know, the uh, bipolar world into multipolar world or the collapse of the uh, ideological barriers has opened Turkey to integrate or to develop more positive relationships, not based on the security, but cultural, economic fields. So this was a great transformation. And unfortunately, for a period of time, at least for 10, day, 10 years, Turkey did not have an economic potential, as well as Turkey had its own you know, internal problems and couldn't get in touch with its neighbors. And for a period of time, this didn't work. But Turkey rediscovered its neighbors, especially in its Balkan, in the uh, Middle East and Caucasus regions, uh, and this went parallel with Turkey's economic growth and you know cultural self-esteem has increased and Turkish diplomacy became much more successful on the, on those bases. And according to you, why could Turkey be suitable for play, playing a major role in stabilizing the Mediterranean zone? Uh, I think Turkey has ability to talk to multiplicity of actors, which I mean that we have historically. Uh, strong ties with almost all the actors in the region. So, you know, I, uh, you know, Ottoman experience, Ottoman legacy has often been considered as a barrier to Turkey's positive relations with uh, neighbors, but at least we know that we have long, you know, we have long relationship between all these actors, you know, the communities, uh, religious groups in those actors, and those you know, relationship have often been considered negatively for a long time. And on the other hand, Turkey is neighboring to those countries and can develop positive economic relationship. So I think, you know, these are many, many important advantages of Turkey. So Turkey knows the culture, language, and ability to have historical background. On the other hand, because of our, you know, the geographical proximity, we can develop positive economic relations with all, all those regions. So these are all advantages of Turkey. And what changes can we expect from Turkey in the future? Uh, I think, uh, you know, stabilization of the region can only be addressed through uh, further regional integration. So we know that many of the uh, borders, territories in those regions, especially in the Middle East, in the Caucasus, are artificial boundaries. So when you look at Iraq, you have multiple of sectarian groups, ethnic groups. When you look at Lebanon, lots of ethnic and sectarian groups, and they couldn't get get on well because their political structures uh, could not fit with the cultural and ethnic structures. So I think the most important think for this region is the further integration of the communities, cultures, and economic ties. And I think I do not see any stable, you know, uh, any possibility of stability other than further regional integration. So that's the only chance of this region. Uh, so since the political boundaries does not fit with the ethnic and cultural, we have to develop further regional boundaries, I think, regional ties. In mm. conflict resolution yes. methods, which um, technique would you recommend or suggest for the conflicts in future? Maybe especially mm -hmm. in according, uh, according to Mediterranean area. I think one of the problems is that you know whenever there is some kind of uh, crisis and uh, possibility of violence, uh, it creates so long term. Uh, it has long term consequences. So. Uh, 
uh, we have experienced a civil war in Iraq and those wars will have long-term influences and we have seen problems in Syria I think the region should have some way to address those violence so in the in the beginning so in uh, in UN the processes of you know addressing those genocide ethnic cleansing is very slow and I think there should be some regional mechanisms to address the violence so that's the first thing the other thing is that I think uh, the, you know, there is a transition in this region, so authoritarian regimes are collapsing and the possibility is that we will probably see different leaders, le different uh, leadership in the region. So we have to strengthen the relation between the people, you know, the civilian communities, uh, so that in the future whoever the leader, uh, the leaders should be, uh, you know, should develop positive relationship between the countries. So we have to invest uh, into the civilian potential, civilian uh, actors, so that civilian actors uh, should press their uh, leaders for strengthening the economic ties because in, it's in the benefit of uh, all the actors in the reg regions. Uh, civil, um, political leaders should be pressed with the uh, communities uh, for further tourism for further uh, cultural interaction i think we have to invest in a civilian dimension so we cannot guess what will happen in the future but probably in the next couple of generations we will see more democratic re uh, regimes in the region and those regimes should take into consideration uh, the priorities of the people so people should be empowered and people's ties with uh, with each other should be strengthened so you know syrian and turkish peoples or iraqi and uh, syrian people's ties should be strengthened in order to have more sustainable long-term relationships uh, where do you see maybe a role of cultural diplomacy in the conflict resolution so i think the uh, so as i said the first you know starting point is preventing violence but it's not enough because the main objective of conflict resolution is not to have negative peace which means the lack of conflicts but to develop positive peace positive peace means that uh, strengthening the cultural economic ties uh, emph emphasizing the further uh, cultural understanding uh, developing a common language of understanding and i think the uh, the only way we can reach to, you know, positive peace is to strengthening the, you know, the cultural understanding and cultural diplomacy. So it can be done through, you know, films, movies, common cultural projects. But, you know, I, I believe that the positive peace can only be strengthened through uh, cultural diplomacy. So it's not just a leadership uh, level, but at the grassroots level and the second level, track two level. So we have to focus other levels as well. Uh, you wrote an article about the um, Alliance of Civilizations, mm -hmm. uh, which discusses the possibilities of conflict resolution mm -hmm. at the civilizational level. Is the Turkish society prepared for this challenge? Uh, I think Turkish society used, you know, starting from... So, we have to understand that Turkish, you know, Turkish Republic has been established as the remnant of the Ottoman Empire. So we have experienced uh, for a long time ethnic conflicts, separatist movements, and uh, the nationalism, Turkish nationalism, was outcome of those experiences, negative experiences. I think nowadays Turkey is mature. Uh, Turkish democracy, Turkish society is mature enough to address those cultural challenges. That's why we now understand that we can only strengthen our you know, economy, we can only uh, strengthen our democracy by integrating further with the cultural other. So that's why I think uh, this is also good for Europeans and for the Western culture. So I think Turkey is nowadays mature, Turkish uh, society, Turkish Republic is mature to address those challenges. It's very difficult because we have been socialized within this context. We have been socialized in such a context that we are surrounded by enemies all over. And nowadays we are trying to change this. So nowadays all our you know, neighbors can possibly be our friends. And this is, I think, changing uh, within the young generation through the education. And I think the Alliance of Civilization is a possible uh, venue, uh, a long-term process and uh, project that can also facilitate this process. Right. And uh, according to the Tur uh, regarding to the Turkish mi uh, Kurdish minority, mm -hmm. it has been suffering a lot of discrimination mm -hmm. since many years. How does co co that contribute to the Tur Turkish national identity? So. 
I think, uh, as I said, Turkish nationalism uh, did not have positive idea about all nationalisms. So, you know, all other identities. So it tried to have a notion of homogenization. So homogeneous identity, Turkish speaking, ethnically Turk, and culturally Muslim. So that was the main idea when Turkish Republic has been established. And it excluded all different sources. of, so it excluded uh, you know, religious people, it excluded the Alevis, it excluded the Kurds, and it ex excluded the religious minorities. So the, the main objective of the Turkish nationalism in the beginning was to create a homogeneous society, but this project failed. So nowadays, everybody in Turkey is understanding that this project will not be sustainable. So we have to have a more multicultural, uh, you know, multi-ethnic society. Uh, and this is, I see this, this is a transition period. So uh, transition periods are painful. So we have to adjust our uh, political system. We have to adjust our uh, legal system. We have to adjust our culture and we, ha we have to adjust our society towards this. So it's a painful process, but it's going in the right direction. I think nowadays Turkish Republic understood that we cannot maintain this homogenizing no notion of nationalism. And I think it's a positive process in that sense. Uh, how does, in your opinion, the Kurd issue affect the uh, role of Turkey as a regional power, emerging regional power? I think that's a, one of the biggest barriers for Turkey's str strengthening of its, uh, you know, regional. So whenever we say we are for peace, we have our reconciliation, we are for. Um, you know, regional integration, people put in front of you, okay, you are for peace, but you have the Kurdish issue. I think in order to be more convincing, in order to be more successful in the, the peace processes, uh, other parts of the world, you have to address your domestic issues. And it's not a difficult issue with this understanding. So nowadays it's clear that democracy is, only, is the only option for Turkey, but we still have this issue. I think this is a, one of the biggest barriers for Turkey, but I don't think it will last long. So. Well, um, thank you very much, thank Dr. Kose. Mm -hmm. uh, we are really happy to have you here today and to have offered your time to share with us, and we are looking forward to future cooperation with the mm -hmm. ICD. It was, part, it was a pleasure to be part of this thank conference. And mm -hmm. hope to see you next time at the ICD mm -hmm. conference. Thank you.